What's up, everyone? This is Christian Duke, and you're watching Strength Addicts TV, powered by Blackstone Labs. Head on over to BlackstoneLabs.com and use discount code STRENGTH20. Save 20% site-wide on products like Chosen One, Adrenal Care, and my personal favorite, Glycolog. What's up, everyone? This is Christian Duke, strengthaddicts.com, back with another great interview. I am joined by two IFBB pros in Stan Topamania McCrary and, of course, Peter Schiello. These guys have been working together now for a few shows, and they seem to only know one thing, and that is victory. So I'd like to welcome Stan and Pete. How are you guys? We're doing good. Uh, we're doing all right, bro. Hanging excellent, in excellent. So talk to us a little bit about, I mean, most people probably did a double take uh, when I put out the article on ironmagazine.com. And of course, you know, uh, the interviews we've done because they don't know Stan to train guys, you know, Stan, uh, I have to be pro from, from yesteryear, you know, really mixing it up and competing in arguably one of the most difficult eras of the sport. Uh, Stan, if you could talk to us a little bit about your decision to take Pete on as a client, and, and uh, what you saw in him and, and if he has met your expectations. Um, okay, back in the, the earlier days, when I first started coaching him, I used to train a lot of guys. Hmm. Then uh, it got to the point where I was training um, these guys and the guys were just, you know, very hard to, to deal with. And so, um, you know, just from past experience, you know, uh, training the guys, you know, you teach them, then, you know, you, you teach them a little bit, then, uh, or you know it, they think they know more than you. And so, and then, you know, whereas you tell them something, and then they got to go ask Tom, Dick, and Harry, you know, is what you said, like, the better day what you said, like, you don't know what you're talking about. So then, you, and they go ask all these people, then they put doubt in their mind, so then they'll have a little faith in the coach. So, uh, you know, it just got to a point where I just got tired of that, and where people, where I would teach him stuff, then next day I know, a few months later, he's a coach, coaching, you know, and they were just brand new at the game, out of the gate. But now, the little information and knowledge they learned from me, they, they took it to, uh, to the next level and they became a coach, a so-called coach anyway. But anyway, so uh, I just started focusing on females. They're a lot easier to train. They listen, they do what you tell them to do. And I said that, um, you know, that's going to be my main um, source, focus on females. And that guys, it's too much headache. That was trouble for me. So that's why I started doing coaching females. And um, Pete came to me a um, few months ago, last year. Anyway, as I had seen him, seen him in the gym, you know, I, I'm at the gym. I very sad to talk to guys anyway, especially if you're not an IFB pro. So I don't really talk to you. And I really stay to myself. I keep myself real small. So, um, I saw him, I watched him, you know, watch his demeanor, watch his behavior, how he, how he, um, he reacted in the gym. And so so one day, I, he was in that training, and I asked him, I said, hey, so let me just please take it through a workout. So I took it through the workout, and um, I saw he had a lot of potential, he had a lot of heart. And it reminded me of my buddy, my, one of my best friends, Rock Chabaz, when he first came to me, like 19, 92, 93, whatever. And he came to me, and he was like 130 pounds, 140 pounds. He says, I want to be a professional body brother. So I said, okay, I'll tell you what to do. He meet me in the gym. So the next day, he met me in the gym, and uh, we trained legs. I said, oh, the guy, he made it in my leg workout. So I said, oh, he got some heart. So, you know, and from that point on, me and him became best friends, and I was his mentor, and I taught him everything now. You know, he owns own, his own gym in Atlanta. He um, turned pro. He trains a lot of celebrity athletes, a lot of NFL um, athletes as well. And so, so the same thing I, that I saw in Rock, I saw it in Pete, where the guy, he was, he was small in size, but he had a lot, the heart of a lion. And so that, that reminded me of Rock, and it reminded me of myself back in the day when I first started. And so I liked that. And so it just brought back a lot of old memories and stuff like that. So I said, okay, let me give this guy a try then. So I, and I told him, I said, listen, if we're going to break my own rule where I, I don't even train guys. But I said, I'm gonna make it essential to the rule. I'm gonna train you because you gotta do listen what as I tell you to do. He said, okay, okay. So um I took him on and um, you know, 
we click. I like his um his attitude, everything like that. Then I said, yeah, well, I can work with him. And so we just start training together, and and I start learning his body and just watch how his body react, react to certain kind of food and stuff like that, and how his body reacts to the training. Then I said, yeah. Then I say that um I can make a win on this guy. That's what I, you know I felt, and I just said all he got to do is just you know just follow my lead. I'm gonna guide him in the right direction, and which he did. And so everything just just took off from there. That's awesome. That's awesome. And again, you know, Pete, I mean, you know, to catch Stan's eye in the gym. Now, you guys uh, train at Miami Iron Gym, which is a fantastic gym. I mean, there's some really, really hardcore gyms in South Florida. Another one is Flex Appeal. Uh, show is brought to you courtesy of Blackstone Labs. That was where PJ Braun's uh, Braun Army meetup was at. I've been to uh, Miami Iron Gym many times. And I mean, it's just a hardcore facility, but it's clean. You could eat off the floor, but it's hardcore as it gets. So, uh, Pete, when uh, Stan, you know, you know, you caught Stan's eye, you guys do that first workout. And of course, it couldn't be chest. It couldn't be arms. It had to be legs. I mean, I, I feel like he was testing you and, and I feel like you passed. What was that like? It was a brutal workout, but I, could, I couldn't fail. I had to do it. I had to listen to his, his role and his guidance and show him that I'm not a quitter, that I, that I just got to do what I got to do. Definitely, definitely. I got to give him 100%. To get 200 back though. And something that Stan said too, um, relative to not working with a lot of guys because you know they they are very quickly second guess. And and I have heard a lot of coaches say that women are easier to work with because they always stick to the plan. But with regards to you, uh, you know, it, it seems like the better you do, the more you listen. And uh, your head's not getting bigger with each victory. If anything, you're. Uh, I feel like you're, you're becoming more and more in line. You know, you're, you're more, I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, now with two victories under your belt, I think, you know, you're, you're very much, um, you know, uh, communicating as, as, as best as ever with Stan, right? hundred percent. I'm not, I'm not letting anything get to my head. It's, it's, we have a goal this year. It was to see how we work together, see how my body transforms, see how I do on the line against guys. And, uh, you know, listen to Stan's plan, change my body around, work on the posing, and give the audience and the judges an entertainment and, and to remember my name for something. They see a lot of guys up there doing the same poses over and over again, the same routines, same type of different boring music. Half the time, the judges don't even want to look at it. Uh, I want to entertain the judges. I want to entertain the crowd. I want the crowd and the judges to remember who Stan was and his legacy when he was up there on stage, not to forget who he is, and to show guys and girls my age. You know, I'm 44 years old now, so I don't have much time left to compete. I just want to do the best I can, and I want Stan to be there with me if we if we take the ride to the Olympia once and the Arnold once as a team. Definitely. You know, and, and what I think is very telling about the package that you and Stan have built along with – uh, your opposing coach, Cheech, who uh, has actually helped a great deal. And I know you also uh, credit uh, Rory Littlemeyer as well with a lot of inspiration. I mean, you really are bringing a package that has seen uh, huge success in Tampa and then also in Pittsburgh, which is like not even nearby. I mean, you're, you're taking this physique to national stages around the country and you're winning and winning. And now you got a show coming up next week if you want to tell us a little bit about that. But there's just – there's no luck involved. I mean, you're bringing the best physique and you're presenting it in the best possible way. Chris, we'll, we'll go any state we got to go. Hopefully next year we do a little international. I, I don't mind where I got to go as long as my, I'm healthy, my body's responding properly, we make the proper changes and the gains for next year. Uh, we already spoke about those, what needs to be done. And when it comes time to hit off season, we'll, we'll start focusing on that. Um, I just got I got to give 100% like I said earlier. I got to give Stan 100% in the gym. I got to dedicate myself. I got to focus. I can't have distractions. I, I, I got to make sure I'm doing everything I got to be doing. Getting sleep, rest, eating, staying on, 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 his, on his plan. And uh, when, time, when, you know, when the time comes to step on those stages, the steps and get on stage, you see me in, in Baltimore. You know, I focus. I'm there. I don't let anyone get, get in my head when I'm there. I stay in the room. I come down 35 minutes before I got to get on stage. I, I get backstage. I get in line. I start pumping up, and I do what I have to do online. And I get back out, and I go back to the room. And the competition's over. With. 
Because, you know, um, Christian, our main objective is, you know, we take one show at a time. And my, my main thing with the key is to put him in the best position to win. So each and every show, you know, we look at every show, we look at, you know, um, any flaws or mistakes or whatever that have been made, then we correct them and make adjustments, then go on to the next show, you know, bigger and better. So my whole thing is, okay, each and every show that we do is, 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 is presenting a better package than we did the show before. And so that's why, you know, I, I look at the Z, I critique it, and I see what adjustments need to be made, I make the adjustments, and we just go for it. We just dial it in like that. And, and that's really the sign of a great coach is to be able to make adjustments because a lot of these cookie cutter coaches, you know, they, they give their competitors or clients a, you know, a plan. And if the client not saying, Pete, that you would, you would deviate from the plan, but sometimes you could say rigidly on, on course and your body for whatever reason reacts differently to carbs or fats or whatever. Uh, a good coach like Stan knows exactly what to do to tweak it back on course. Whereas, you know, a coach with less experience, a so-called coach, probably has no idea what to do. Um, also, in terms of Baltimore that you had mentioned, you know, Marcelo was there where I met you, and, uh, you know, that, that he's played a, a key role uh, in, in the, the past uh, aspects of your contest prep, and, and I think you and him maintain very good ties, which I think is important. But what I wanted to say also is that with regards to what Stan said about, you know, uh, you know your preps and, 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 and bringing it uh, better packages after time, during the pandemic, uh, Stan's got his own gym, the sweat box. Uh, when Miami Iron Gym wasn't available, uh, how, how important was it, Stan and Pete, to get these workouts in? Uh, obviously, with social distancing and obviously, you know, uh, with, with all the hygiene entailed and all that, but how important was it to, to get these workouts in? I mean, I, I almost think that you would not have the success today had you not worked out then. I, I agree with you. I, I think it was the, the most important part of the, of our off season was majority spent there. Uh, it was a little gym, but it was hardcore, old. Weights were heavier than they were. It was me, Stan, and my training partner, John Hollywood Williams. Uh, if it wasn't for John, also he he was there pushing me, uh, believing in me, and, and helping me lift. Uh, you know, we made a lot of a lot of strong gains at that gym. Um, the three of us worked out. We worked our asses off. We sweated. Um, Stan will tell you sometimes I joke with him and I'm not joking. I tell him, let's go back to the sweat box because there's no distractions. There's no one there but us. And we got the best workouts in there, the best pumps. We were exhausted first thing in the morning. If it wasn't for that sweat box, I wouldn't compete this year. I, I needed those two months, the three months that we were there to really put on the size and strength. I, you know, Stan got me to lift weights there that I never thought I would lift before. Yeah, the sweat box was a great asset. Um, so I was training and going into our contest prep. Because really gave Pete like a head start on everybody else because they didn't have accessibility to the gym because all the gyms were closed. And just we were just fortunate enough to just go in a, in a warehouse gym that was just hardcore. That they just go in and just focus, totally focus on training, you know, get in and out, you know. And uh, so that really helped us a lot. And it really helped Pete a lot. He was able to make good gains and, you know, was able to focus, focus himself and take his body to the next level, in which, which was you know, two minutes that said, like I said, going into the contest prep, getting ready for these shows. So it, it was a big plus for us. Absolutely. And again, you know, your, your, your main haunting, haunting grounds, uh, stomping grounds, uh, Miami Iron Gym, great, great facility, which I know. Oh, yes, both. absolutely. Miami Iron Gym, like I said, is the, um, is the Mecca, old school high court Mecca of, of the South, of South Florida. Um, that's the only gym that I train at. And, you know, and, I was there from day one, going to be there until the, the doors fall off. Absolutely. So. And, and I, if you guys haven't been to Miami Iron Gym, I, I strongly recommend that you go there. Like I said, uh, they are so hardcore. I mean, they play metal, they play rap, they play really hardcore music. Not like, because I've never known anybody that can like train hardcore to Lady Gaga or whatever they play at these commercial gyms. But thing is, this is a really hardcore gym, but uh, a lot of people don't understand what hardcore means. They think hardcore means, you know, old, falling apart, falling apart, dirty. That is not Miami Iron Gym. This place is clean, updated, totally uh, up to code with all the social distancing and all that, but just hardcore as it gets. Now